Okay, I would like to tell you about the parallel axis theorem. I'm not going to derive this theorem for you. Uh, you can get the derivation out of your book. It, it's pretty straightforward. Um, I am going to show you how to use this parallel axis theorem, how it applies to um, problems out of your book. Okay, so um, the parallel axis theorem helps you solve for the rotational inertias um, about um, axes that are not through the center of mass. And so it goes like this. Um, first of all, let's agree where the center of mass of this of this system is. This is a 2 kilograms, 2 kilograms, 2 kilograms, and 2 kilograms. They're connected by very light rods, and I should have told you that on the last one, that these um, rods that are connecting these things are extremely light compared to the 2 kilograms. That's why we're ignoring them. Okay, well, um, the center of mass is right at the center since they're all 2 kilograms. It would be right at the center. And um, I'm going to find the I through about this axis. Notice how that goes through the center of mass. So this will be my axis. So it's going to rotate. It's going to rotate like this, or about that center of mass. All right. Well, um, then just let's find it. I is equal to two kilograms times. Oh, I should tell you that this is two meters across. And it's three meters down. So that would be two kilograms times um, it's one meter from the edge squared plus um, two kilograms times one meter from the edge squared plus um, two kilograms times one meter from the edge squared plus, ran out of space here, 2 kilograms times 1 meter from the edge squared, from the axis squared. Okay, so um, when you add all those up, I think you get um, 8. I equals 8 kilograms meter squared. Okay, well here's the thing. The parallel axis theorem says if you want to find the, uh, the I about an axis that's not through the center of mass but is parallel to that axis. It's got to be parallel to this axis. And you know what I is for this axis, then you just use this equation. I parallel through this through an axis. I I through an axis that's parallel to the center of mass is equal to um, I through the center of mass plus um, the total mass of the thing that's going to rotate about that axis times the distance between the two axes squared. Okay, so this is the total mass. And this is the distance between the two axes squared. So um, let's find the I through this axis. See how they're parallel to each other? Okay, well, if I already know the I through um, the center of mass, then the I through the other one will equal the I through the center of mass plus an additional term, the total mass of the object, so it would be 8 kilograms, times um, how far the two axes are apart squared. So that would be one meter, they're one meter apart, squared. And so um, that gets me 16 kilograms meters per second. Or excuse me, that gives me 16 kilograms meters squared. So that's the I th about this axis. It's, it's a greater I, a greater rotational inertia. Hey, um, we didn't need the rotational inertia, we didn't need the the. Uh, parallel axis theorem to get this. We could have just used the regular equation. Let's do that just to see that, it, that we'll get 16. So if I would have used just the regular equation for this, <laughs> let me turn off my phone. If I would have used just the, the um, regular formula for this, it would be Two kilograms times zero meters per second, or zero meters squared, because isn't that just right on the axis? 
plus two kilograms times um, two meters squared plus two kilograms times two meters squared plus two kilograms times, well, again, we're back on the axis with this one. So um, zero meters squared. So add them up zero plus, this is gonna give me uh, eight and eight, so that's 16. Um, let me let me just say one other thing uh, that that we're assuming. We're not only assuming these rods are light, but we're assuming that these are pretty much point particles. If this were a big giant sphere like I've drawn them, they do have rotational inertia about this axis. But we're assuming that these are little point particles that have a lot of mass. Yeah, that that's definitely an assumption we're making. Okay, so you might not be very impressed with this parallel axis theorem because. We didn't even need it to do this. In fact, this might be simpler than the actual theorem, doing it this way. So I understand what you mean. So let me show you what, let me show you what, um, when this is very handy. Okay, I for a hoop, if this is hollow, this is all air here and you got this metal band, kind of like my, my wedding ring, you know, just a, a metal, just a, 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 a hollow hoop. Uh, well, the eye, is going to be just um, m, the mass of the hoop, times r squared, because all that mass is all at the edge. In fact, um, you can look in your table in your book on page um, 200, 299, page 299, you can see that there's a bunch of, uh, there's a table of rotational inertias. Let me dim the lights a little bit. See, these are, this is a table of rotational inertias, and it, can, it just gives you the equations for these. We're going to actually calculate these, but you need to use calculus to calculate them. So we're, we're going to postpone that for just a, a little bit more time. Okay, well, if you know the I for that, if you know the I for this is that, what if you wanted to know the I about this axis? Um, so the I about, the, if this is the axis um, rotating here, and we put a, say, um, let's say we hung a hula hoop on a nail in the garage so it, it actually went around this axis. It actually went around that axis. What is the rotational inertia about that axis? Well, no problem. I'll use I parallel is equal to I through the center of mass plus MD squared. Now, um, these axes are parallel. They definitely are parallel. See them? Those are parallel. So that's going to be um, I through the center of mass, which is mr squared. Got that from the table. Plus um, the total mass, m. And the distance between these two axes is r. And we've got to remember to square it. So that gives me... Um, 2mr squared, it's a little, it's twice as big as when you just go about the one axis. Uh, let's get one more done here. If you look in that table, again, you'll see that for a, a rod going about the center of mass, if it's a very thin rod, the I is going to be equal to um, 1 12th ml squared, where m is the mass and l is the total length. Okay, well, what if I wanted to know the I about this axis? See how those are parallel? Well, that I about this far axis would be the I through the center of mass plus MD squared. Well, the I through the center of mass is 1 12th ML squared. Oops, I wanted to make that capital. Plus the... Um, the total mass of the rod, m, times how far these axes are away from each other. So that would be L over 2 squared. So that's going to equal um, 1 12th ml squared plus this is going to give me ml squared over 4. If you do that, you'll see that it's 1 3rd ml squared.